Hi guys and welcome back to Is It Worth It Reviews. I'm Srboljub Stojanovic and today we are talking about SMSL SU9 Ultra. This Ultra is uh, just slightly different from the Pro version. And the only difference is that the DAC chip is not a Sabre, but an AKM. It was a flagship Sabre DAC chip in the Pro and now it's a flagship AKM chip in the Ultra. The price remains the same at 499 US dollars. And the everything else too, from the looks, build, features, connectivity, is the same as with the Pro version. So looking at the back, you will see a very standard set of digital inputs that include optical and coaxial speedif, also USB, this time it's a USB-C connector, and uh, that's it. There is no I2S or AES EBU, those are still reserved for slightly pricier DAX. Uh, as for the outputs, we have both single-ended RCAs and balanced XLRs. The volume on these can be controlled by using digital attenuation in the DAC. It works, it can help you connect the DAC directly to the power amp, but the quality of that attenuation is no match for a true analog preamp. So I do not review that part. It's just very subpar compared to the DAC itself and to any good external preamp that you can purchase. So as you can see, it's a good old SU9. It looks the same from SU9 to SU9S and Pro and now Ultra which is not a bad thing. It's a functional design, it has a small colored display and quite uh, a bit of settings to play with, like PCM digital filters, and I personally preferred slow roll off to the others, because it made sound just a little bit milder and fuller and less edgy, than the sharp roll off. But if you like the absolute speed, clarity and crisp edges, you might like sharp roll off more. Sound colors are a little bit oddly named in this one. I'm not sure if this is a final firmware that I have here, instead of, you know, rich tube, uh, clear like usual, there are just these numbered options. And once again, they introduce very minor differences into the sound. I stuck with the default one, with the first one, because uh, in this particular DAC, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure that I can notice the difference. And what else to say? There is a remote control, the, the same one that SMSL has been providing for some time now. It's small plastic, it works okay. There is a Bluetooth antenna that you can attach in the back if you want to use wireless connection. What else to say there? We have a world's best DAC chip. We have a world's fastest XMOS processor handling our signal. We have the world's highest Synod. Well, I'm not sure about that because I do not follow ASR, but I'm sure it's fantastic. So, is the DAC itself the most clear, the most neutral, the most transparent DAC there is? So, I started listening to this DAC and it really is extremely transparent, clean and clear sounding one. Now, that uh, becomes a little bit boring to say lately because all good DACs are quite clear and crisp and transparent these days, but this one is particularly, and uh, it has that great focus. It pinpoints with great precision and the edges are really crisp. So detail retrieval is extremely good and there is a great sensation of that background darkness. So those really clean and crisp tones are emerging from the darkness. But that sets the overall tonality to be more on the lean and very flat neutral side of things. 
if you like some sort of warmth, your mid bass to be a bit heavy and padded, or your mids to have a little bit of bloom that's really pleasant, the SU9 Ultra is not doing that. It's focusing on clean, crisp tones, on precision, on sharp focus. It's like a ninja killer with his katana. It's just how SU9 Ultra rolls. And uh, when it comes to the sound staging, it's not particularly spacious or big in any way. It's just a normal, modest sound stage. But that precision and that focus that we are talking about means that everything happening inside of that sound stage is really masterfully separated. Uh, everything has a clear outline, then there is an empty space, then there is another tone and another instrument, and uh, the, the, the sound never feels cluttered or muddy and hazy in any way. So that overall sensation of clarity and cleanliness is always there, and that great pinpointing and separation. But how does it compare to some other decks? To find that out, I started with topping E70 Velvet and SMSL DO400 that uh, basically sound the same. When you compare them directly, you notice that E70 Velvet and DO400 sound a bit warmer in the mid bass and the mid range, but uh, they have milder sound. The, the edge is not as clean and as well defined as with SU9 Ultra, but it's softer and someone might appreciate that. On the other hand, uh, both E70 Velvet and DO400 sound just a little bit dull on the edges and quick transients and tiny details compared to Ultra. That's super ninja clean. And looking at it from another perspective, uh, you could maybe say that uh, uh, Ultra is even a little bit aggressive in that mid-range and that uh, insane clarity, but technically speaking, it does reveal more things happening. And when something is happening in a really fast pace, for example, I like listening to flamenco guitarists and they have really a quick finger work with strings and their pace is fast and they're doing a lot of things uh, in a short period of time and I can follow what they're doing uh, with more ease and I can hear strings and their vibrations and those transients more clearly with uh, Ultra than I can with just slightly duller and slightly muddier and fuzzier DO400 and E70 Velvet. And that would be about it. There is no difference in terms of how big the sound stage is, uh, how uh, they handle dynamic swings. Uh, SU9 Ultra actually sounds a little bit livelier and snappier, but in terms of microdynamics. And it, it just feels faster and a little bit more explosive to react to small and sudden changes in pace and rhythm and things happening in the recording, then uh, once again slightly slower and slightly less speedy DO400 and E70 Velvet. But in a certain system you might still prefer these other two decks. I wouldn't rule that out. But here in my system and for my years, I did, uh, I, I have to give a slight edge to SU9 Ultra, and it's just a hair or two hairs more resolving and quicker sounding than E70 Velvet and DO400. The difference is not big by any means. That leads me to SU9 Pro that I do not have with me anymore. I had to let some of these DAGs go. But I do remember that it sounded on pair with E70 Velvet. Just how resolving, how informative, 
that was on the exact same level. The only difference was that SU9 Pro had slightly deeper soundstage, slightly more laid back presentation and E70 Velvet pushed things a bit more upfront. Going by that, I would say that SU9 Ultra is a touch more resolving, informative and snappier sounding than SU9 Pro. I cannot claim this to be true 100%, but I do have quite confidence that Ultra is a bit snappier, cleaner sounding than SU9 Pro. Once again, the difference is it's by a hair, not more than that. But the funny thing to notice here is that if you expected the AKM chip to have some sort of smooth and nice and velvety sound to it, it doesn't. If anything, how SMSL implemented it and what uh, power supply and output stage they used in this DAC, if anything, it sounds snappier and sharper on the edges and overall just cleaner. And there is nothing velvety about it. Uh, depending on how you look at it, that can be uh, a good or a bad thing, depend on what you are looking in a DAC and in a sound. Next, I compared it to a slightly pricier, topping uh, D70 Pro Octo which is as good as Pro Sabre. So I did uh, this one comparison with the Octo, which is at the moment 100 US dollars pricier than the SU9 Ultra. And Octo here is still a slightly better, slightly richer sounding deck. There is a bit more warmth to its sound and every tone just sounds a bit fuller, there's a bit more body to it. So if you can imagine a tone being, as I said, ninja sword focused with SU9 Ultra, the D70 Octo has that same cleanliness and clarity of edges, but it adds just a little bit of plumpness to the tone. And because of that, it feels a bit more palpable, full bodied, and it radiates a bit better in space. The SU9 Ultra sounds ever so slightly leaner compared to D70 Octo. And aside from that, Octo does develop slightly larger soundstage. That would be about it. They're much more comparable in terms of how much information they can dig from your recording how quick and snappy they sound, how dark the background is, how dynamic they sound, but uh, Octo, D70 Pro Octo, is just a bit fuller, more palpable and slightly larger sounding. And that leads me slowly towards the conclusion. SU9 Ultra is a really highly resolving, focused, clean sounding deck. If you're looking for something that has warmth, that has some sort of full mid-range and lush sound, because you maybe remember my reviews of SMSL M500 MK2, M400 before that, SU10 after that, all of those were warmer, lusher sounding decks. But SU9 Ultra went a slightly different route. It focuses on clarity and cleanliness and in some ways it reminds me more on toppings sound than it does on the SMSL. And that's not either good or bad, I'm just telling you so you can be aware of it. So you can uh, know what to expect from this deck and would it match well with your expectations and your system. But aside from, from uh, that, which uh, boils down to preference and system matching, uh, objectively speaking, this is uh, one more model from the SMSL that is fantastic at this price. If anything, I actually had to say that compared to these other uh, sub 500 US dollars models that I compared it with, like E70 Velvet and SMSL DO400, 
this one is most technically capable. And that would be all for today. I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned, more coming soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.